Good people, good people. Welcome to episode 45 Dome Podcast today. <clears throat> talk about 1995 and the year that's sometimes overlooked. For whatever reason, we think about the greatest years of hip-hop history. 1995, sometimes it's not talked about. We kind of go from 1996 to 1998. But uh, 1995 is easily one of the deepest years of hip hop history. And what sparked this um, episode is because earlier uh, yesterday, one of my young boys, I think he was joking, but he had put that uh, Big L lifestyles of the poor and dangerous is better than Wu-Tang forever. And I didn't know he was joking, so I made a comment and said, really, is that what we, we say? You know, and, and a lot of people end up chiming in and it became one of those type of things. But again, like I've said before in the past, I try to keep perspective on hip hop. First of all, I love it, Big L. Love several joints on the album. We'll, we'll get to that. But in terms of 1995 and the dopeness of that year, I would say that the top 10, my top 10 albums of 1995 can compete with the top 10 albums of almost any year in hip hop history to me. You know what I'm saying? Especially 90s years that people love so much, talking about the golden era of the 90s. I believe 1995 is just as strong as any year of that decade and maybe even most of the years of the 80s you know what i'm saying so i'm going to talk about you know kind of my top 10 in 1995 and others that could have slipped into the top 10 and also big l's place in 1995 no revisionist history let's have a real conversation about that year now for perspective i was in college in 1995 you know what i'm saying so this is not from someone who was eight years old someone who learned about 1995 after the fact no diss on that i'm just saying i was a hip-hop head in 1995 in college so that's that's where we are with that um and i, I lived at the record store every tuesday in the 90s um when in the time there was a midnight sale when wu-tang forever came out in 97 when, when life of the death came out in 97 when puff anyone that came out there was a big uh midnight release Anyone who watched this episode will say, yeah, Tony was there. You know what I'm saying? So at any rate, let me name 10 albums I feel like probably the top 10 albums in 1995, and maybe some that could slip in there. Uh, and then we'll get into some things. Number one, I have On the Bill for Cuban Links. It is, I don't want to say this is, or it's not necessarily in order, but a few of them would be this high. On the Bill for Cuban Links, obviously Rayquan and Ghost. Some people say it's the best album out of Wu-Tang Clan. You know what I'm saying? You can debate that against uh, 36 Chambers. <clears throat> On my all-time uh, top 20 hip-hop list, I'm going for Cuban Wings like ranked number four or five. You know what I'm saying? And, and 36 Chambers like number nine. <clears throat> so I actually think I'm going for Cuban Links is one of the greatest rap albums of all time. For me, it's, it's absolutely flawless. Uh, just to even try to create that magic again would have been almost uh, impossible. But you know, years, years, years later, uh, Rayquan did do only the Cuban Links too, which I felt like if you take you know two or three songs off it, it might have been five mics. You know what I'm saying? But it was a dope, dope album. Number two, I have Mob Deep, the infamous album. Most people know that that's a seminal East Coast classic, underground classic. Shook One was one of the biggest songs ever. Uh, at that time in hip hop, and still banging the clubs now. Um, Q Tip helped executive produce it with with, with, with with Havoc. He did three tracks on there. Havoc has been on record saying that Q Tip helped guide him on the album. You listen to uh, Havoc drums from Juvenile Hell to Infamous, and you know that Q Tip absolutely influenced and helped him with the drums. You know what I'm saying? That's not really a secret. Uh, a lot of people study Q Tip, so it is what it is. Infamous. Number three, I have Liquid Swords. I mean, one of the darkest albums of that era. Just a flawless over RZA production. Some people look at Liquid Swords as the greatest routine album. Just like people, some people look at Cuban Links the same way. Absolutely lyrical performance was amazing. The beats was crazy. It is what it is. Soul Food by Goody Mob. I've always said Soul Food by Goody Mob is one of the greatest albums of all time. From any era, from any, you know, region, whatever you want to call it, Soul Food is the perfect uh, 
album for the South. It represents the South perfectly. And at the end of the day, we're all from the South. Even everyone from New York and out West, you know, you look at the history of America, we all, we migrated from down here. And the soulfulness and the spirituality and soul food, to me, makes it one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. So even though I have it right here at number four, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily a ranking, but it could be one to me. I'm serious, it's, it's that great to me. Uh, the shine of my Smith and Wesson. I mean, you know, after into the stage, man, you know, boot camp was rolling, you know what I'm saying? Buckshot was killing it. Who would have thought, man, that the shiner would come out and be this strong with Tech and Steel? And some people actually like the shiner more than they like their, um, into the stage, you know what I'm saying? So it's right there on par with into the stage, just depending on whether you ask me, you know, it's that great. E1999 Eternal Bone Thugs. I mean, come on, man. Before you don't sleep on E1999 e Eternal. Go look at the track listing. Go put it in with the headphones on. One of the greatest albums of that year. An amazing hip-hop album. Help open up the doors for the Midwest and Cleveland in 1995, man. Do not sleep on that joint. Uh, I have Return to 36 Chambers. Go, um, ODB. Now, the production on Return to 36 Chambers is, 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 is stellar. You know what I'm saying? ODB is probably one of the most unique MCs of all time. Uh, I'm going to have this one probably slightly outside my top 10, but some people will have it different in their top 10, top 5 of the year. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just listing. I'm going to go past 10. But, you know, just for the sake of conversation, I have uh, Return of 36 Chamber. I'm at album number 7 right now, but I would probably have this one slightly outside my top 10. Uh, Living Proof by um, by Group On. Probably this year of 1995, it might be the second or third best produced album. You know what I mean? Of course, Malachi and Lil Dap can't compete with, you know, a prodigy or with, with Ray and Ghost as far as like MCs. But in terms of the album, they their little style meshed perfectly with what Primo did. The Improve is probably one of the best produced 90s albums, period. You know what I'm saying? But then you got uh, Superstar and Living and Suspending the Time and all that. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing album. You know what I'm saying? Now, I have Me Against the World at number nine. <clears throat> now, this ain't a ranking again because I would have Me Against the World closer to the top, top five of 1995. Too many, Migas the World of Tupac's uh, Apex as an MC. I think he gave you everything on Migas the World. I did an other ep earlier episode, uh, Migas the World versus Machiavelli. You know what I'm saying? And I actually had Migas the World slightly better than Machiavelli. I know some people love, love, love Machiavelli. I do too. I think it's a dope album. But Mick is the world, man. It is is Tupac at his at his best, most pure form. Title track, Mick is the world. So many tears. Lord knows, uh, young niggas. Uh, I love that that cameo sample. Uh, Dear Mama, one of the biggest songs in hip hop history that'll, that'll be played a hundred years from now. Uh, Death around the corner. Uh, and for you, uh, bar heavy enthusiasts, if I die tonight. You know what I'm saying? Middle of the world, man, Tupac. Number 10, Mr. Smith, L. Cool J. This is L. Comeback album to me. In the midst of 1995, you got Wu-Tang still high. Snoop and Dre are still high in 1995. You know what I'm saying? For real. You still have, uh, you know, Junior Mafia and that with Big and Bad Boy. You got uh, Nas and, you know, all these other guys uh, killing it. You know, the, the South now with Outkast came uh, the year before that. But, man... LL Cool J, who started out in 85 with radio in the same era with Run DMC and the Fat Boys, Houdini, you know, and you, you, you know, all of that. He comes in 1995 with doing it, lounging who you love, all of these joints, street tracks on the album. I mean, Mr. Smith is a banger, a top three or four LL Cool J album to me, 10 years into his career. Now, understand, a lot of people 10 years in their career not, not hitting like that still. You know what I'm saying? So now you've heard. Now these are just ten. I'm gonna name again. All built for Cuba links. The infamous Liquid Swords, Soul Food, The Shining, E1999, Eternal, Return 36 Chambers, Living Proof, Big Against the World, Mr. Smith. Now we'll go back to this Big Air conversation again, real quick. Lifestyles of the Poor, Dangerous. I went to a record store called School Kids in 1995 when I copped the album based on <coughs> on uh, MVP and put it on Big L. You know what I'm saying? Put it on. I had them, I heard them joints, had a little mixtape, I believe, at the time. I went to the store and got it. I was a big L fan. I know you used to remember Lord Finesse and Digging the Crates. So let me say all that. So some of you guys, if you wasn't there, I was a fan. I posted a picture of the original Big L CD 
I have a downstairs in my basement. I said, so I'm a fan. I thought it was a good album back then. I thought he was great lyrically. I thought Buck Wild had some dope beats on there, but a whole lot of other beats I didn't love like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's not ranked that high to me. Lyrically, we're talking about as an MC, where does he rank in 1995 as a rapper? Oh, he's one of the best rappers of 1995. We're talking about albums. Is his album better than any one of those that I named? You see what I'm saying? Now, I do love MVP. I do love Put It On. I enjoy it. Uh, I like Street Stroke a lot. It's probably my favorite Big L song, Street Stroke. And I think Danger, Jump, Danger Zone is, is incredible. Outside of them four songs, go back and listen to the rest of the album. No hate. Can that album stand up to the 10 I just named you? That's all I'm saying. So he doesn't rank, his album don't rank in the top 10 in 1995, but, and that shows how deep to me. That shows how deep 1995 is. But I'm not even done yet. So let's, 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 let's perspective. We can move out of uh, uh, ODB's return of the 36 chambers. If you need to, you can add in KRS One self title album. KRS One self title album was a great album. You had Dog Food by the Dog Pound. So, the same way people in New York love the infamous or living proof and all of that stuff on the east coast of New York, is the same way on the west coast they love Dog Food. Dog Food is a multi platinum album out of Death Row. Corrupt and Dance was amazing on the Corrupt. MC is some of the best of 1995 on Dog Food. Go listen to New York, New York, and go listen to the whole album. A track on that called So So Much Style. Whew. You know, go listen to that. Dad's on the production was incredible. You know what I'm saying? Fat Joe, Jealous One Still Envy. Now, Big Ed obviously can wrap circles around Fat Joe. But if you go song for song, track for track, Jealous One Still Envy. Versus lifestyle, poor and dangerous. Come back and talk to me. Bias aside, I'm not talking about who can rap the best. I'm talking about which album is the best. Do you think that lifestyle of poor and dangerous is better than Just One Still Envy by, by Fat Joe? Because some people say that's Fat Joe's best album. Uh, is it better than Carrots One Self Title album? Coogee Rap came out with four, five, six. You know what I'm saying? Maybe my favorite uh Coogee Rap album. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I probably listen to four, five, six more than uh, any other G rap album. So how does Big L album stand up to Cool G Rap's four, five, six? You know what I'm saying? Far Side second album came out. Uh, <clears throat> Onyx, All We Got Is Us came out. You know what I'm saying? Let me see if I have anything out here. Do You Want More About The Roots came out. Uh, in a Major Way, E-40 came out. Cypress Hill, Temples of Boom came out. Oh, AZ Do or Die came out. Do you think that, and I didn't even have Do or Die in my top 10. Do you think that Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous is better than Do or Die by AZ, by AZ? Track for track. And do you think AZ is, or, or L, which one's a better MC? Do you think Big L is better uh, MC than, than AZ? Um, overall MC? Do you think Lifestyles is better than Do or Die? Do or die? Excuse me. Now, the way AZ is rapping on Rather Unique, to me, is equivalent to the way L is rapping on Danger Zone. So they, they kind of nick and nick as MCs to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how do you, well, how do you feel about that? Not About Nature's uh, Poverty Paradise came out. That could be in the top 10 right here if you want to move that ODB. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to chin on ODB. I'm just saying, if you're saying that's the weakest one out of my top 10. Once again, let me let me do my top 10 one more time. On the Bill for Cuban Links, the Infamous, Liquid Swords, Soul Food, The Shining, E-1999 Eternal, Return to Thursday Chambers, Living Proof, Me Against the World, Mr. Smith. That's 10 without me naming Do or Die by AZ, Dog Food by uh, Dog Pound, Carries One Self Title album, The Roots, Do You Want More albums. Not that, that's not their debut album. Organics is their debut album. But Do You Want More is a great album uh, by The Roots. Black Thought and Malik Beanham was killing it. Uh, Onyx All We Got Is Us album. The show soundtrack came out that year. What else that came out that year? Like I said, Poverty Paradise, Temple of Boom. So this this year is Safe and Sound by DJ Quick. Uh, Sitting on Chrome by Master Ace. This is why I say that, you know, in 1995, really 20 deep. You know what I'm saying? But if you take the 10, 12, 13 best of 1995, I think it absolutely can compete with any year of the 90s. You know what I'm saying? 
that being said, for me, that pushes the L Lifestyles album down. You know what I'm saying? Where would you rank uh, Big L Lifestyle compared to 1995? What would you rank 1995 uh, as an overall year in hip hop history? You know what I'm saying? Where would you rank Cuban Links and Infamous and some of those albums on your all time list? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think both of them might have made my, uh, well, Cuban Links made my top five. I think Infamous at one point when I when I uh, started the Dome uh, uh, website, I think it was right number 10, maybe back in like 2017. Uh, Soul Food made my top uh, 15 greatest albums of all time. Um, yeah, Me Against the World made my top 20, I believe. So several of these albums in 1995 made my top 20 all-time list in hip-hop history. That's how dope I think this year is. You know what I'm saying? And this year is also a year of features with Biggie on a lot of features, man. And, you know, Biggie was killing 1995 because a lot of people understand that Ready to Die came out winner at the end of the year in 1994. You know what I'm saying? So 1995 was big year. You know what I'm saying? Junior Mafia, all the get get money uh remix and he was killing the clubs and total and etc. Well, and I think at some point, well, I don't know if one twelve was out at that point. But nevertheless, man, Big had a big year in 1995, and then of course Nas and, and Pac and everybody in 1996 went crazy. You know what I'm saying? 94 was still Snoop year because uh, the crime that came out at the end of '92 and Doug's Duck came out in '93. So, a lot of people think that uh, Snoop ran '93 way well, did because of the crime, but '94 was actually Snoop, yeah, and then murder was the case, you know. Saying Lee, all this leading up into 1995, like I said, the dog food drop, uh, with the dog pound that, that album is crazy, man, you know what I'm saying? So, again, we can't just look at our own, uh, what we like just in New York or, or the East Coast because. Dog food was crazy. Soul food by the good mom was crazy. E1999, Turner by uh, Bone Thugs was crazy. So you look at all of that, you know what I'm saying? And again, uh, where does L rank with these albums? And, and, and this is no hate, no. I'm a big L fan. But someone told I started getting people naming all these albums that lifestyles is better than just in general. And we start naming these Wu Tang albums. I'm saying, you know what? This is a perfect time for me to talk about 1995. And since he came out in 1995 as far as his debut, let's really have an honest conversation. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, nah, that's it, man. Uh, I ain't gonna hold you, man. We're gonna, we're gonna move on from uh, episode uh, 45 of the Dawn Podcast. What's your thoughts, man? Holler at me. Peace.